You know, on the the same day that um, the Netoclax was approved, Glastigib was approved. Um, in the same population, older, unfit, previously untreated AML, but here in combination with low-dose ARC. Now, Glastigib is, as you know, a hedgehog inhibitor, an oral, early bioavailable drug, and on its own has virtually no activity, very similar to venetoclax on its own as a single agent. But in a randomized phase two study, the combination of glastigib with low-dose ARC um, resulted in higher response rates and better survival than patients who just got low-dose ARC. Um, and that led to the approval. I have a concern about it, okay? And that is that it was not a blinded study. So imagine if you're the clinician taking care of a patient and you know they're getting low-dose ARC and you're at MD Anderson or Memorial Sloan Kettering and all of these institutions that have other drugs, would you be more willing or quicker to pull them off study if they're on ARC to do something else? And that's my concern about a study that had just a, you know, that was not blinded. So we're hopeful that when we do the randomized trials with, that are blinded with placebo, that maybe we'll get a better understanding of the true benefit of glastigib. Okay, so with my very leading comments, glastigib, venetoclax. They're in the same patient population. Which do we use now? Rajit? So it's a, again, it's a difficult question. So we, we suddenly are faced with all of these agents, and they all have activity to various degrees, but, but for whom and in what order? Those are the two big questions. Um, I think that you know it, it's we we certainly don't want to get into comparing response rates across trials, of which these are not uh, arms of one trial. But there is, relatively speaking, it seems a higher rate of uh, response with uh, the venetoclax combinations. That being said, we we can't stand on that as as uh, sufficient evidence to pick one or the other. I think it really comes down to, uh, in part, toxicity profile because some of the toxicities of the hedgehog inhibitors are well known and affect quality of life. And certainly that is one of the things that we're, we are talking about in terms of venetoclax having potentially some quality of life benefits in terms of allowing people to be transfusion dependent. Okay, expound on that because I don't think a lot of people have experience with this hedgehog inhibitor. What yeah, are the toxicities? So uh, uh, some of the major things are, are, are uh, loss of appetite uh, and hair loss and those can be uh, quite profound. So if we're giving a drug like that uh, where we are going to incur those side effects, what are we doing to the quality of life of the patient? And that has to be a principal concern of ours in patients who potentially have a limited lifespan uh, when we start initiating treatment. So, I mean, we participated in both trials, and the A's of venetoclax or decidabine venetoclax or Lodac venetoclax was sort of eye opening. Everybody heard about this, and patients were being flung at this trial. We didn't have the same experience with the Glastigib. That said, I'm glad we have glass to give to look at it. Completely different mechanism of action. We don't know what to do with it yet. It's a fun new toy, maybe. Yes, the we the the hair loss, the those those things I think are, are quite important, but could you fold this in? Now we've got something new to experiment with in going forward. I don't think we know what to do with it now, and I don't think it's going to be used like the But agent. I think what's exciting is we have it. So yes, now we can exactly. figure that right. out. Exactly. And that's what's different is now that you have more lures in your tackle box, you can figure out you know, in which pond does one work and in which pond should you try something different and in which combinations will this be best. Are we going to use Lotus RSC now in the US based on this approval? I doubt it. But are we going to use this drug in combinations to figure out how best to use it to improve outcomes in AML? I expect it. Yeah, I think it's amazing. Like four or five years ago, you know, we wouldn't be discussing lordose ARC at all in the United States. So now we have the argument of which lordose ARC, which is great. I mean, this is a good thing, right? But, and I think the, I think today I agree with all of you. If I had a patient or recommendation, I think the HMA when lordose ARC when in the same population is giving us very exciting response to survival. It's hard to use lordose ARC, the uh, glass to give, you know, in that population. But we actually, and at MD Anderson, we didn't for, ever use lotus ARC, but we're using lotus ARC then in one specific group, and I think that's an important point, is the HMA failure sure. group. So right. because, exactly. you know, most of the data with HMA then, except I think City of Hope has a little bit different, but most experiences are, if you've received HMA in adequately, four cycles, six cycles, for MDS, for CMML, for AML, and then you're failing, adding venetoclax is giving you marginal to no benefit. In fact, we have started excluding those people from our trials of HMA then. But with lotus ARC then, you do get good response rates, 55, 58. 
The survival is still not great. It's about eight to 10 months, but that could be a group to build on. You could have a low-dose ARC then. Maybe could there be a role to add something like a hedgehog? And in that situation, I think, you know. And you have to applaud it. the regulatory agencies, whatever is uh, getting them to make these approvals. Once the drug is approved, then the research really explodes. That's right, yeah, that's yeah. right. I think an important point along those is that a biological signal might emerge, right? As we have more experience, as an example, we've seen that patients with IDH mutations seem to have uh, a pretty high response rate to the venetoclax combinations. We have to see if that holds up uh, as we get more data, but will we begin to see patterns that emerge due particularly uh, to particular cytogenetic groups or molecular groups have an enhanced response to one of these regimens? We'll get an answer to that eventually.